Hello there. So today I'm going to talk about setting up the Sky X Pro pretty much from start. And I'm going to pretty much show you what I usually do. I have a remote observatory and so I can't keep things simple. But this will actually get you up and running at least. So I've already entered my serial number. So let me go and click. The first thing it will do <coughs> when it runs is it will use your IP internet address to try to locate where you are. Sometimes this works and sometimes this doesn't. So we can confirm if it actually did that. And if it didn't, I will show you where you do put it in. So under input, go to locations. And this custom setting is usually what it fills. And as you can see, it actually did find my location. Now here's a side note, this daylight saving times option. In Arizona, we don't actually have that, which is nice. But if you do have daylight saving times, I kind of recommend that you don't really use it when you're doing imaging with astronomy. It's just a little bit of a headache to turn it off and on when it flips back and, back and forth. And since it doesn't really matter in the sky, uh, it, why bother? But that's just my opinion. Now, if this had not worked, you can actually manually just type it in, or you can actually go and uh, look it up through here, through these list of locations. But in this case, um, mine did get fine, so I'm good to go. <clears throat> so the first thing I actually do is this is what you see when you first open up the sky. And it usually puts it in a daytime mode if the, it is surely daytime. But I don't really care for that. I mean, I don't care if I see the daytime sky. So under display, you can actually turn that off or on using the show daylight option. And that's just usually how I prefer to have it. So the first thing I will um, also do is change this position. Now these are the positions, you know, look north, east, west. I always like to just look up. And that gives me a general view of the entire sky, which uh, when you're doing remote imaging, this is generally the best way to keep it. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. So this is a little bit bare. So I want to go ahead and set some references. So under the chart, you'll notice these tabs here. There's all kinds of tabs for different things. Now if there's a tab here you don't need, like for example if you don't have a dome, you can actually come up here, right click, and go to the ones you don't need and just uncheck it off and it will come off this list. Now when you're doing remote imaging, keep in mind you're transmitting information through the internet. So the less, less graphical information you're sending, the better. So by using just what you need, that really saves you some time. So under charts, you can kind of go into references and lines. And the one that's really important, I'm sure, not sure why this is not set by default, is the meridian. It's a good idea to know where the telescope is, whether it's across the meridian or not. The other thing I like to see is the constellation figures. Um, it helps kind of sort of put together where the sky is. And this is pretty much as far as I take it. But you can actually set up labels, like if you want to see the Messier objects. Um, I don't do this again because I am going through the internet. So because the more labels you put here, the more graphical interface you're using. So it tends to send out more. Um, I generally know where everything is. So if I see Hercules here, I know M13 and M92 are in the area. So these are pretty much the ones I just set. And again, there are all kinds of different things you can set here. It's unlimited what you can do with the software. So now that now that I got the sky the way it wants, it doesn't hurt to actually go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'll just give this a name. Generally, I usually put the month and the year. That just kind of tells me when it was created. So now I'm going to go ahead and set up a telescope. A couple ways of doing that. Uh, the, what I, the way I use it is I just use the telescope menu and I come up to telescope setup. So this is the telescope setup 
um, dialog essentially and you essentially select your mount by this mount setup and you're going to go ahead and choose what you want to do now it supports all kinds of different things um, if you're using uh, astrophysics uh, although I would recommend using the ASCOM version of the astrophysics um, uh, whatever you have in this case I'm going to use the simulator and actually if you want to learn how to use software using the simulator is really a good way to learn because you can do anything you want with it because you don't have a telescope that you're actually driving into the ground once uh, that is done you usually go into settings this is where you set up the serial port com port you know whatever yeah the simulator is not going to have anything so I don't need to do anything here um, you can also check these off or on I usually turn off confirm slews because I'm generally careful before I slew um, the one thing I do turn off is this right here always keep telescope crosshairs visible on the sky chart okay a lot of people I can tell you I'm the minority here a lot of people will actually leave this the way it is I personally do not like to do that I like to keep this off uh, and I'll tell you why in a little bit here um, if you have a dome controller this is a, this is very useful uh, this is a file that's written from the sky of where your telescope is actually pointing uh, the dome like DDW for example will read this file and keep the dome and the telescope synced together so if you have a dome you you want to check this uh, so we're good to here there's nothing more to do here so now we are, we're ready to connect uh, a couple ways of doing that again you can go through the telescope menu which is what I usually do and click connect or you can actually go to the telescope tab which is down here and use one of these options here so I'll go ahead and connect the telescope right here and as you can see the first time when it does connect it does reposition the sky so I'm gonna set it back to the way I like it I prefer this view because when I slew the telescope around this, this is the telescope position right here this yellow icon it will actually move around the sky and then I know the telescope is per pretty much safe now if this cursor went off over into the horizon I know something has seriously gone wrong and I need to abort the slew so the way we slew is very easy you uh, essentially click where you want to go to that would be one way of doing it and you click slew and it's asking if I want to confirm because I did not turn that off it, uh, you can actually turn it off right here it looks like so I'll say yes and now the telescope's slewing. Now if I need to abort, I can actually click this abort and it will stop slewing. Uh, if I want to continue, then I can go ahead and go on my merry way. Now you can see this is why I like this particular view because I can get a whole picture of what the telescope's actually doing. Okay, so now that we have the telescope set, um, usually what happens is the telescope's pointing in a different location to where uh, the sky is actually is like for example if you uh, told it to go to Vega and the telescope slewed over here well it's obviously not in Vega so what we need to do is synchronize the telescope with the map itself and the way you do that is you actually click where you want to click click on like for example if I told it to slew to Vega and it slewed here well, I need to tell the sky I need to correct this so what we do is we synchronize this and again under the startup we'll go to synchronize and we have a lot of options and if you're using T point that's a whole different story so we're going to keep in the simple world we're not using a T point model so I'm going to click here to sync on on uh, Vega when I say yes it essentially puts a telescope and the sky in in line so now everything is perfectly aligned so if we want to go to an object again we can actually physically type it um, I usually always know the catalog numbers of the NGC's or the Messier so I don't really have to look them up but if I uh, type M92 for example 
you click fine it will show me where it is and then I can click slew and I'm good here um, if you do need help uh, there's this advanced catalog down here and it's got all kinds of things common names you know uh, the bubble nebula things like that uh, and it, it's very very good about that um, one thing about the telescope tab that's interesting and the simulator does not have this is um, you can actually have a way of moving the telescope only a few arc minutes or giving it a nudge and it usually will show up in here somewhere uh, this T point, point no pointing model is an add-on for the Sky 6 if you wanted to use a T-point pointing model. So if you had a, like a very large telescope, like a 24-inch telescope, this is probably something you'd want to have anyways. But this nudging um, is shows up on some mounts. The simulator does not have this, but it would show up here. Okay, one more thing we do really need to set is a park position. Uh, some mounts have predefined parks, like astrophysics, for example. So you don't really have to do that, but um, uh, others do. And the way you set the park position is you pretty much slew either from here or m some other method, like if your mount had a joystick. So I'm going to just, I want to park in the east, let's just say. So I'm going to go ahead and slew to the east. And it doesn't matter where you are because it's, you know, it's not going to park on a particular star. It's, it's a position. And then under the shutdown, you could come up here and you say set park position. And when you do this, it says use the current telescope position as its park. So I'll say yes to that. So now I'm going to go ahead and move the telescope again. And I'm going to actually park it. And the way you park it, is you come up here and choose park. And as you can see, it's going to go ahead and move it over there. Now that it is parked, um, we would need to unpark it to uh, to continue moving around. So I will do that. Okay. So that's kind of about the um, slewing and parking and all that. The other thing that you'll find useful, especially if you're an imager like me, is you want to set up a field view. So under the display, there's this field of view indicators. Now here you have a whole list of telescopes um, that you can pre set up. If yours is here, that's great. Uh, mine is not here. So if I come in here and I pick GSO, I have a GSO 10 inch RC. And you can see they have an 8 inch. Now uh, they may have improved. Uh, a more updated version of the Sky X, because I'm not sure. What, uh, I don't have quite the latest version. Might have, might have actually listed the, this telescope, but since it's not here, this is kind of a good example. So I'll go ahead and pick this, and I can actually edit this to what it really is. So mine is actually a 10-inch f/8, and the focal length here is 250. and it doesn't have to be totally precise. And it will calculate for you uh, what your um, focal length is. So now I have created my own telescope. Um, now there are also eyepieces, but I don't, I don't actually own any eyepieces, believe it or not. I just do photography. So I'm gonna go into detectors and I'll pick my detector. And my detector is a QSI. So I will WSG, and as you can see, now I have my telescope and my detector. So I'm going to go ahead and create my field of view. And you can create more than one of these if you have different setups or different telescopes or, or whatever. And the way you select them when you have more than one is you just simply check this box. Now you won't actually see it until you actually do a preview here. So now we're good. Okay, so... Let's just uh, go ahead and go to M13, just for the heck of it.
Okay, now um, there's a couple ways to zoom. You, you have this here uh, that goes in and out, uh, but there's one way of zooming that isn't 100% documented, or at least I haven't found it, but I'm sure it probably is somewhere, is if you hold the shift key down and then click the left button down and drag a box where you want to zoom into, it drives this little diagonal box like this. And once you do that, you can either click outside to cancel it or click inside to zoom in. And as you can see, there's our, my there's my field of view indicator. So at this point, I can actually move the sky to where uh, my field of view indicator is. And then I can use this how you normally would use a field of view indicator. Um, you can actually rotate this around uh, a couple of ways. Uh, under tools, you get this rotate tool. And I always have my uh, camera north up for the most part and um, then again you can zoom in a little bit uh, and see exactly your field of view here um, I'll go ahead and turn off the rotate tool so this is pretty much how you set up the field of view indicator um, I have another video that tells you how to find a lost scope uh, using the sky x and i will make just one reference point here um, you can actually move to any position in the sky at all going to the orientation tab menu and picking navigate under navigate you've got a couple of uh, tabs but this one here is enter coordinates and you can actually uh, enter the coordinates that you want here um, there's a few options here or you can slew you can you know you can essentially um, for example I'll just go ahead and change this to zero zero and I can I can actually slew to this and you'll see that it actually goes ahead and moves to the position that I actually typed in here um, this is also very useful if your tel if your telescope is off alignment and you need to sync the if you're like if your telescope is lost and you, and you know if you're remote you don't know where it's pointing you can enter the RA and deck coordinates here and use this enter chart uh, on RA and deck to sync it the other video on my website find lost scope kind of talks about that so I'm not going to go any further with that so that's pretty much it on the sky X there's tons of add-ins you can do there's camera add-ins there's um, T point, which uh, again, like the bigger telescopes uh, at Kitt Peak, we use we use a T point model, and um, that's pretty much it. So enjoy the day.